Hello, and welcome to our educational video, Early Detection is the Key, What Nephrologists Want You to Know About Lupus Nephritis. I'm Annika Hazlitt, a member of the Board of Directors at Kaleidoscope Finding Lupus, and your host. Today, we're fortunate to have Dr. Herman Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez is a practicing nephrologist and director at El Paso Kidney Specialists. He's also a clinical associate professor of internal medicine at Texas Tech University Health Science Center in El Paso, Texas. Dr. Hernandez will describe the importance of detecting lupus nephritis early, what you can do to limit kidney damage, and his suggestions for how to approach your appointments with a nephrologist. Before we hear from Dr. Hernandez, I'd like to thank our presenting sponsor, Arenia Pharmaceuticals, for their generous support in making this event possible, as well as the support from our community partner, the Northwest Kidney Council. Now, let's hear from Dr. Hernandez. Thank you for having me speak today. Uh, my name is Germán Hernández. I'm an adult kidney doctor in El Paso, Texas, also known as a nephrologist. And here I take care of a large number of patients with lupus kidney disease also known as lupus nephritis. Lupus affects any part of the body, but when it affects the kidneys, we call it lupus nephritis. That's when it can really cause a lot of problems for the patient, both in terms of morbidity and also in terms of increasing their risk of death in the long run. So it's really important to try to be aware of lupus nephritis. Up to about 45% of patients with lupus can develop lupus nephritis. Sometimes the diagnosis can be tricky because it doesn't necessarily show up with symptoms that the patient can identify easily. It's important to get screened for kidney disease if you have lupus. And by screening, it would be basically a blood test and a urine test. In the blood test, we're looking to see if there is any problem with the kidney's function of cleaning the blood. And in the urine, we're looking to see if there's any problems with the barrier that separates the urine from the blood. We're looking to see if there's any blood in the urine, and more importantly, to see if there's any abnormal amounts of protein in the urine. And again, somebody can have lupus nephritis or kidney involvement with lupus without having any symptoms, but we can catch it early with these tests, both in the blood and in the urine. So it's important to get these tests uh, done uh, if you have lupus, especially if you belong to a group of patients that are at higher risk of developing lupus nephritis. And what do I mean by that? If you have high blood pressure, for example, if you have um, obesity or overweight, if you are a patient that has already been known to have an elevated blood test that we call creatinine or a decreased kidney function test on the blood. So all those are things that put somebody at higher risk of developing lupus nephritis. Once somebody gets lupus nephritis, the risk is that they, they may develop kidney failure and require either dialysis or kidney transplantation. So up to about 30% of patients who develop lupus nephritis can go on to develop uh, what we call kidney failure requiring a kidney transplant or uh, dialysis. That's why it's important to make the diagnosis early because the earlier the diagnosis is made, the faster treatment can be started and hopefully save those kidneys from going on to kidney failure. So when we look at different populations uh, in the United States, uh, patients from minority and ethnic groups are at much higher risk of developing lupus nephritis. Black patients, Latino patients, Asian and Pacific Islander patients are at a much higher risk of developing uh, lupus nephritis. And they also tend to be diagnosed at a much more aggressive stage or class of lupus nephritis. So if you are part of one of these uh, ethnic or minority groups or populations, it's important to get screened for lupus nephritis, uh, again, with a blood test or with a urine test. 
Among the kinds of kidney involvement in lupus nephritis, there can be very mild classes of kidney disease and very severe classes. And so one of the important things to do once somebody has been found to have either abnormal levels of protein in the urine or blood in the urine or an elevated uh, serum creatinine blood test or low kidney function by a blood test is to go on to obtain a kidney biopsy. A kidney biopsy basically is obtaining three or so small pieces of kidney under local anesthesia so that the pathologist can examine them under a microscope. And then uh, when they look at the kidney tissue under the microscope, they can tell us whether the involvement is mild, moderate, or severe. And depending on that kidney biopsy result, that basically helps us figure out what kind of treatment is needed to try to decrease the inflammation in that kidney and to decrease the chances of those kidneys getting worse over time. And this is very important because a lot of the medications that we use basically suppress the immune system. And so by suppressing the immune system, we are also not just decreasing the uh, inflammation and the uh, attack on the kidneys, but we're also unfortunately decreasing the immune system's ability to fight off infection. And so that's why we have to be very careful about who it is that we choose to treat with immunosuppressive medications, because we want to make sure that the balance between the risks of the medications and the benefits are obviously uh, in favor of getting benefits for our patients. And so that's why getting a kidney biopsy is very important once we've determined that a patient with lupus has uh, kidney involvement, again, by detecting either blood in the urine or abnormal levels of protein in the urine. And going back on to the uh, side effects of the medications, one of the medications that we use uh, quite often is corticosteroids, or also known as steroids, or also known as prednisone. And it can be a very useful medication, but we have to be very cognizant and very careful of working together as uh, healthcare providers, doctors, with the patients so that we can limit the amount of exposure to these uh, steroid medications because they do have side effects that can cause organ damage while still helping protect the kidneys. They, if we use them for too long or for doses that are too high and we don't decrease the dose or taper the dose, then we could be increasing the risk of affecting other organs like the eyes, for example, the development of cataracts can happen, high blood pressure can happen, problems with cholesterol, the development of diabetes or high blood glucose, also thinning of bone that can lead to basically a condition called avascular necrosis of the hip, where basically the hip bone can die. And so there's a lot of side effects that can happen. And so therefore we have to be very careful about making sure that if somebody has lupus nephritis, that we do a biopsy to figure out who actually needs um, aggressive treatment versus who needs just uh, mild treatment or more monitoring. And then for those that do require aggressive treatment to uh, really monitor them very carefully and very frequently so that we can decrease the doses as fast and as safe as possible to decrease the risks of developing other organ damage. So once you as a patient and your nephrologist have come up with a treatment plan, it's very, very important to stick to the plan. So in other words, compliance with the treatment is very important because we really want to decrease that inflammation in the kidney. We want to decrease the damage in the kidney, and we want to basically save the remaining healthy kidney tissue so that we can decrease the chances of going on to dialysis or going on to require a kidney transplant. So being very, very focused on taking the medications as prescribed in a very scheduled manner is very, very important. Of course, if you develop side effects, you need to talk to your nephrologist right away because we can alter the treatment regimen 
to other medications that perhaps don't have the side effects that you might be experiencing. So again, communication is very, very important. If you develop a side effect and you don't tell your nephrologist and you just stop taking it, then we're losing our window of really trying to decrease the chances of further damaging the kidneys and decreasing the chances of, of staving off dialysis and staving off a kidney transplant. If you have been sent to see a kidney doctor for the first time, these are some of the things that you might want to keep in mind. You obviously want to make sure that they're testing your urine to see how much protein you have in the urine. Um, and you also want to uh, make sure that your urine being, is being tested to see if you have red blood cells or blood in the urine, because those are two markers that we use to know if the kidneys are involved and if so, to what level. So for example, the level of protein in the urine is very important. The higher the level of protein in the urine, the more likely it is that you will require stronger treatment. There's two ways that we can measure the level of protein in the urine. One is a little bit more involved in terms of the patient's effort and that is what we call a 24-hour urine collection for protein. If your doctor orders a 24-hour urine collection, it's very important that we capture all of the urine that your kidneys have made for a 24-hour period, and not less than that and not more than that. And so the way that I usually tell my patients to do that is to pick a time, usually on a day where they don't have to be going out of the house. So for example, on a weekend, and let's say that they wake up on a Sunday at eight o'clock in the morning. So at eight o'clock they wake up and their bladder is gonna have some urine, but that urine was made by the kidneys before eight o'clock. So at eight o'clock they should get up, go to the bathroom and empty their bladder and not collect that urine. But then after that 8 a.m. Uh, void, if you will, capture every single time that you're going to the bathroom. You're gonna collect that urine and put it in the uh, large container that the laboratory has given you. So you're gonna do that for every time you go to the bathroom throughout the day on that Sunday, for example. And then overnight, if you wake up to go to the bathroom, you also want to catch that urine. And then on Monday, when you wake up at eight in the morning, your bladder will have urine that's been made by the kidneys uh, prior to eight o'clock. So at eight o'clock you wake up and you wanna empty your bladder and when you capture that urine and you wanna collect that urine and put it in that container. That way we have all the urine that has been made by the kidneys over a 24 hour urine, I'm sorry, a 24 hour uh, period, not before and not after. That way when you turn it into the lab on Monday morning after eight o'clock, the lab can then measure how much protein your kidneys are spilling uh, in one 24-hour period. And that number is gonna be very helpful for you and your doctor to determine uh, how severe the kidney involvement is on top of obviously getting a kidney biopsy. Some patients may find this to be a little bit too cumbersome. And so a lot of times what we will do is we will ask for the first morning void urine. And so when you wake up, you're going to collect the urine that you have in your bladder. And then what we do, we send that to the lab and we measure the urine protein concentration, but also the urine creatinine concentration. And we take the ratio of those. We take the urine in milligrams per deciliter concentration of the protein so the urine protein concentration in milligrams per deciliter, and we divide that by the urine creatinine concentration in milligrams per deciliter. That gives us a ratio, and that is an approximation of the number of grams of protein that are being spilled in a day. It's not exact, but it's an approximation. And so that's an, an easier test to do. Now, initially, you will probably just get a urinalysis test in which they look at the urine and they look to see if there's any level of protein being spilled without necessarily a quantification of it. Uh, and they will also look to see if there's any red blood cells in the urine. And then after that, 
you will probably do either the 24-hour urine collection to see how much protein is being spilled in a day or the urine to protein creatinine ratio to estimate how much urine is being spilled in a day. And again, those two numbers um, are very important to know. And what we do once we decide on a treatment plan, let's say we've already done a biopsy and the lupus nephritis class is either a class three or a class four or a class five, those are the types of kidney involvement classes that will usually require treatment with immunosuppressive medications. So we use that number of proteinuria or protein in the urine to begin with as the baseline number so that we can compare how the subsequent numbers are doing while on treatment. And we want those numbers to come down pretty fast because the faster the protein levels come down in the urine, the higher the chances are that you're gonna have what we call a full renal remission or a full remission from lupus nephritis, which will then give you a lower chance of going on dialysis and a lower chance of requiring kidney transplant. So usually what we are targeting or what we are aiming for is to decrease the levels of protein in the urine or proteinuria by 25% once you're into the three month mark of your treatment. Now by six months, we are aiming to decrease the levels of proteinuria by 50%. And then the total goal would be to reduce the level of proteinuria to less than 500 milligrams at least by a year or so. So by 12 months, we want the levels of protein in the urine to be less than 500 milligrams. If that is achieved, that is what we call a renal remission or a lupus nephritis full remission. Now, a lot of times we can achieve that sooner and the sooner we achieve a remission, the better off you will be in the long run in terms of protecting those kidneys. Now, at the same time, while we're trying to decrease the levels of protein in the urine, we want to limit the amount of prednisone that you are being exposed to as a patient with lupus nephritis. Again, to decrease the risk of developing other organ damage that we talked about earlier. And so usually the goals are to decrease the dose of prednisone to seven and a half milligrams per day or less by three to six months. Now, it's very important that in order to achieve these treatment goals of lowering proteinuria and also decreasing the levels of exposure to prednisone, that it's really a partnership between you and your nephrologist or you and your rheumatologist, you and your healthcare provider. Because again, it's going to be a decision between you and your doctor to come up with that treatment plan and to stick to that treatment plan. So it's very important that that partnership be very strong. I know that we covered quite a bit today, but I hope that some of this information can be helpful for you as a patient. Uh, and that hopefully, if you go and see a kidney doctor, you're armed with more information as to what to expect and what kinds of things to ask uh, about, and also what to expect in case you end up requiring a kidney biopsy and treatment so that you can uh, hopefully have more information to know what to expect and hopefully get you to the treatment goals that you need. Thank you for that great information, Dr. Hernandez. This brings us to the end of our symposium. Early detection is the key, what nephrologists want you to know about lupus nephritis. Again, we thank Arenia Pharmaceuticals and the Northwest Kidney Council for their sponsorship of this program. And we especially thank you for watching. We encourage you to visit our website, kaleidoscopefightinglupus.org, and follow our social media platforms for the latest lupus news, program information, award-winning blog articles, and so much more. Thanks for spending time with us. And remember, you are not alone. I'm Annika Hazlitt for Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus. Please take care.